because okay i'm going to try this again i just tried doing this on facebook live and it told me that um it wasn't working so i'm going to give this another go um phoenix here ah, and yeah here I am, another episode of showing up behind the mask, my social experiment in showing up with what is present. And this theme that I'd like to talk about today is there is no other. Um, I will do my best to repeat what I just said, but maybe that wasn't necessary to say. Yeah, some context. Last year when I was in the States, I was working um, in ceremony with one of my mentors and my teachers and I had the privilege of sitting with a particular altar. Um, and this altar has different directions that we work with and each direction represents an element and has a teaching and a doorway it's like a doorway into um, understanding ourselves more clearly and this third door that i'm that has been really informing me this past year um, i feel like i'm in the perpetual third door of this life ceremony which is the unity door and the teaching of this door is unity and the shadow of that for lack of a better word is separation and during this time that I had the privilege of working with this beautiful brother and his community up in this up in New York at the sanctuary, um, one of the invitations throughout our journeys was to sit in silence, to be in silence, to really allow the reflections that we were witnessing around us and internally to really inform us because the main teaching was that there is no other, that everything is merely a reflection of, of oneself. Um, yeah, which really um, in theory was always a very kind of cool concept for me to, to play with, to, to kind of grapple my mind around. And in this past year, it's definitely become more and more of a focal point for me to see myself in everything. Last week, I talked about being self-centered and how this like reclamation of being in our center, spiraling inwards, continuing to listen to what our own unique truth is. And yeah, over the past week, I've had some really big um yeah every week seems to be pretty big at this time because i'm choosing to look i'm choosing to look at my reflections in everything in everyone and i had um yeah some relational conflict of sorts with a dear friend and at first there was this like anger that i kind of felt um in 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 these parts of myself that were really triggered and like I was so blinded by my disappointment so blinded by my anger that it was very easy in the moment to kind of like point or project and fortunately I chose to take some space so that I could go back and reflect and, and just be with my own process without projecting all of like these past triggers or projections onto this person which proved to be really fruitful because what I found in kind of sitting with the discomfort all week um, in particular the first few the first few days was that like all of the things that I was upset about all of the things that I was kind of that were being activated or being triggered in me were actually just showing me a really clear mirror <laughs> of myself and all of the areas in which I had been out of integrity or the ways in which I um, had been allowing the fears that moved inside of me to kind of um, 
keep me from speaking my truth or that kept me out of connection, I'll say. And yeah, like what I continue been continuing to journey with is like, there is no other. Like everything that I see outside of myself is really a reflection of, of what's going on in, in me. And can I have the courage and the faith and the trust to keep looking rather than like turning away, blaming, shaming, guilting, projecting my own stuff onto other? Yeah. Um, and that's really uncomfortable. It's really uncomfortable to admit to oneself our own imperfections, my own imperfections. Um, and I, I know for in kind of traveling with this over the past year and months is how often I've kind of put walls up around my own heart because of fear of being hurt or fear of being disappointed or like had my kind of standards like built up and all these expectations that actually was a really subtle way of staying out of connection, of staying separate. And ultimately, what I'm realizing is that I don't want to be separate. I, I want to be connected. I want to be in connection with other. I want to be in connection and deep connection with myself and deep connection with the more than human world and deep connection with the people around me. And how have my own blind spots sabotaged connection um, for my whole life um, in the past? And so working with this kind of medicine, this teaching that there is no other has been really like um, evolutionary, <laughs> has been really um, enlivening, really insightful, really um, humbling, really confronting, really uncomfortable and at the end of the day, I want to see, like, I want to see, I want to see myself more clearly. I want to see myself more clearly from inside of myself and from around myself. It's like, it's really easy to be like, oh yeah, we're all one. We're all one. So we're all in these individuated um, kind of we have these little, these individual lenses that we see everything through. And these lenses are sometimes kind of, um, I don't want to say tainted, but they, they, they are, they're not super clear, you know, because I might see somebody else through my own triggers and my own wounds and my own past experiences and betrayals of the past or hurts of the past or resentments of the past. And, rather than like pointing the finger outward, you know, I know it's very cliche, you know, you point two fingers out and this finger's pointed back, but it's so true, it's so true. Like, am I willing to see the fingers that are being pointed back at me? And am I willing to have the courage to keep on showing up and leaning in and meeting these reflections that I see so that I ultimately can be the best version of myself? And, yeah, so very heated time here in the world. So much division happening, unfolding, occurring at this time. And yeah, like it can be really easy to just like sit on our high horse, sit on my high horse. You know, I have had a real tendency of being self-righteous in the past and continue to like see me, all these parts of myself that are self-righteous, that thinks she's better, that thinks she knows more, that thinks she has something more figured out than somebody else. And that's just bullshit. Like it's not, you know, I am flawed. I am perfectly imperfect. I have many blind spots that I can really see more clearly when I'm in connection and in relationship to other. And so this week, I've really been sitting on how, yeah, it's like when the reflections get really uncomfortable, I have had the tendency of kind of shutting down, packing, packing up and running away. And this week, I've been choosing not to run. I've been choosing to lean in. And 
And, you know, what commenced at the beginning of the week with this kind of conflict with this friend is really shown me that it's like this inner conflict that I've had within myself, this inner conflict of like, where I judge myself, where I guilt myself, where I shame myself, where I hold myself to these um, unattainable standards. And therefore I've been projecting that onto people outside of myself, which if I can't meet them, how is anybody else gonna meet them? You know, if I can't meet them, how can I expect my, my friends or my lover, my beloveds or my community or my culture or my country or the world to, to meet those, those, those places? And so this teaching of there is no other, it feels like, it feels like the teaching to just keep on working with at this time, maybe my whole life, you know, because if I, I can't be unified inside of myself, then how can I expect there to be unity outside of myself? If I, I can't begin to like love, accept, forgive those parts of myself that I've othered, how can I even have the capacity to love, accept, forgive all those others outside of myself. And at this time of so much division that I'm experiencing in the world, even in my like intimate relationships and in my connections and yeah, if I am not willing to meet those parts of myself that are the ones that are being like they're separating like I'm 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 casting out these people because they don't like fit my my beliefs or my perspectives or I don't fit their beliefs and their their perspectives and they should see me as I am you know but it's like really none of that matters honestly it's like can I be with the reflections that I'm seeing and, and go inward and go inward, like continue to spiral inward, like looking from within this kind of space of mirroring and be kind and loving and forgiving and accepting and unifying from this place inside. And if I, if the more and more I gain skill in doing that from within, I know that it ripples out. It's, I know that it ripples out because there is no other, you know? So it's like, if I can fully accept my own choices, fully allow myself to deepen in integrity with myself, then this is the way that I'll ultimately be showing up in the world around me. And if somebody um, chooses to behave in a way that's not in full resonance or not in full alignment. It's like, okay, it's not like, I don't need to take that on. For, like, I don't need to take it on as this kind of like personal affront or, um, yeah. It's like, if I can find that place of acceptance in me, then I can find that place of acceptance in other. If I can learn to love all parts of self, then I can learn to love all parts of other because ultimately it's all the same. And I know it sounds, sometimes it sounds like, oh, uh, we're all one, we're all not, we're not, we are, we are, and we're not, though we are. And that oneness starts right here inside of me. And so, yeah. I don't have the answers. I have no idea what like the answers are, except that I choose to keep asking the questions, you know, keep asking the questions and keep living the questions. You know, it's like if there's a, a part of me that's out of out of alignment, then you know, what reflections can support me to come back into alignment? 
you know, those places in me that get triggered and poked and activated and raw. Can I return to this place of center and feel it and allow that discomfort, that grind, that grit to just keep on polishing, keep on sharpening this, this loving awareness? Can I just allow, keep on allowing the grit and the conflict to keep on sharpening this loving awareness? And from this space of loving awareness, unity unity is like it feels like it's just it's just kind of like the the overflow of that you know can i sit in the midst of the storm and allow it to simply like move me move through me without holding on without allowing myself, like without kind of fixating on it being an identity. Like, am I willing to just keep on changing, keep on shifting, keep on morphing, keep on transforming? Like nothing is ever fixed or solid. Everything is constantly in motion. Can I give myself permission to be formless in a sense? Like my identity to be formless. Can I give myself permission to not fix myself to any particular identity because it's like, oh, I'm looking at this beautiful bird. Oh, I am that bird, you know? And like, oh, how is this bird moving? And how is it gracefully flying? Or how is it behaving in the nature? And oh, can I allow myself to receive this reflection and welcome it in so that I can also learn to move in these ways you know or I see something that's like out of alignment or doesn't really feel good it's like my body is telling me ick yuck okay and and can I allow that to just bring me deeper into a, a deeper understanding of what does bring me into a, 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 a space of flow and connection and resonance so yeah, this is the inquiry that I'm in right now. This is the inquiry that feels like I'll be in for a really long time, continuing to have the courage to see myself in everyone, to see myself in all the things. You know, I don't, my deepest prayer is to find a space beyond duality to find a space where I can stand and not even like stand so rigid, but really just like lean in to a space where I'm not playing, I'm not playing on one or other, one or any particular side of anything, you know? Can I simply sh keep showing up, keep showing up with loving awareness? Oh, that other, that's also me, you know, that person that has such different views and beliefs to me. Oh, they're also me, you know, and they also feel these feelings of fear and sadness and anger and joy and confusion and purpose. And, you know, it's like, can I continue to see myself in everything and allow myself to not only kind of keep on like aspiring to understand what it means that there is no other. So might I even be able to embody that, that knowing that there is no other and that all of it is just simply life reflecting life, reflecting life, life reflecting life. And, and I'm a piece of that. You know, and, and you are a piece of that and they are a piece of that. And the conflict that's happening in the world is all like, there are all these kind of moving pieces that just continue to like show us, you know, where we're fixed, where we're like grasping, just holding on so tightly 
to this need to like understand something as being a certain way. Like there is no one way, <laughs> you know, it's like this many, 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 many ways all reflecting like the path of life, of love, of unity, of harmony, of balance. And yeah, how do I just continue to give myself permission to be on that journey, to be a reflection of the journey, to be a reflection of the willingness and the courage and the faith and the trust that it takes to keep spiraling inward, leaning in, being that spider at the center of the web that like where all the threads are connected into such a beautiful tapestry of connection and wholeness. Like the spider doesn't look at any one particular web as being better than the next, you know, like they're all interwoven. And yet the spider just totally sits at the center of her web, you know, welcoming, welcoming, life comes, you know, life comes, life comes. And so, yeah, I welcome life to come. You know, I, I welcome the uncomfortable reflections, even though they're not fun, though it's in some way it is fun, you know, because it's like this ultimate, this, this, this kind of <laughs> cosmic game of hide and seek, you know, the one consciousness seeking itself, seeking itself in everything and everyone. And I'm a piece of that consciousness. And I like this game, you know, I like this game. I like seeing, oh, there I am, there I am, there I am. Oh, you know, and that's, that's love too. I can love that too. And I can love that too. And I can love that. I can love all these pieces. And rather than othering, you know, rather than othering, how can I be an agent of unification? from right here within the center, right here in the center of this web of creation, this tapestry that's, that's, that I'm woven into, that we're all woven into. So yeah, that's my inquiry for now. So yeah, may we all cease othering ourselves and one another. And may we all have the courage to look, not, not, not shun, not push against, not build walls up. It's like, how can we welcome the diverse, the diverse reflect, diverse reflections of self? That's, that is like literally everywhere, everywhere, everywhere we look, it's another diverse reflection of self. And that's cool. I think that's cool. I think it's really cool. So I'm going to keep playing that game. And I'd love, I'd love, I want more and more playmates here. I want more and more playmates that I can, you know, put up my mirror, like, whoa, look at you. There you are. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa that, oh, that reflection. Ooh, it's, and ah, ah, I can love it. I can love it. I can love it. I can love it. I can love you. I can love me. So anyway. Have a beautiful day.